स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया lecture 4 of module 1 so we had in the last lecture tried to finish some of the clay products and now we will move to stone so the concepts that will be covered is particularly the quarrying of stone seasoning and dressing characteristics of stone deterioration of stone and types of stone now the what is the basic difference between clay products and stone the first part is stone is naturally available whereas the clay products we had to make it or we had to prepare it by the process of burning and we had already gone through those but unlike brick or tile or terracotta or any other product from made from clay uh, made from clay we have to look into how we can get or get stone from the mines so let us see how we obtain stone these are some pictures where you can see the stone has been cut from the quarry that is the stone mine where you can get the stone and you can see lots of machine or vehicle that has moved in which has special which has special features they can do some part over there and after doing so you can mine out or quarry out stone and these stones after doing some treatment to it after dressing it after seasoning it and dressing it then only you can bring it out for use and stones can be used as building block itself stones can be used as a finish on top of a surface stones can be ornamentally used by working on it like making sculptures jaffrey works then stone may be used similar to clay tile like for roofing purposes as well stone used for aggregates in concrete mixes so the way brick burnt brick fourth class brick which was charred black in color was going back to the foundation here also the debris from the stone quarry they can be selected and put into as aggregates in concrete when we will go into concrete we will elaborate more on aggregates there we will see yes we are using stones so these are some examples demonstrating the use of stone as a building material the entire structure rock cut architecture of ajanta and elora caves you can see are entirely made of stone the step well where you see in rajasthan that is also made cut out of stone in our country context rajasthan kota rajasthan and particularly kota they all have lots of quarries you can see the monolithic rock cut temple of mahabalipuram so it is it has come out from one single rock similarly you can see use of stone in a very different way stones for tiles you can see here the flooring is made of stone tiles these are not taking any structural load they are taking human load people are walking on top of it whereas these stone tiles are having decorative use they are from the taj mahal so the stone which is recommended for the tile has the flooring tile is not recommended for this jaffrey work and similarly when you see this picture where it is roofing made of stone tiles 
it is totally different purpose. And finally, you see what I was talking the aggregates which also are obtained from the query. They also do, do not go waste, they also have a purpose or use in building industry. So, let us try to see what is querying and what is involved in that. So, the open part of a natural rock from which useful stone is obtained is called a query and the operation involved in the production of natural stone is called querying. So, there should be availability of sufficient stone otherwise there is no point going for that long exercise. Proper transportation facility should be there as because you have to carry the stone from the site back to your uh, from the quarry back to your site as well you require lot of heavy machinery to reach there to do the operations also. There should be availability of local labor who are also somehow trained through experience or through their generations who can do the work. And the queries if it has faces a lot of rainfall then draining out the prop water also becomes a an issue if it is remaining accumulated. So, the location of important and permanent structures in the vicinity is also required because you might require to do some blasting operations to take out or dislodge the rocks from the quarry for, uh, for the useful purpose. And there should be nearby dumping site, refuse site and obviously all these are to be checked while before initiating a querying process. So, there are specific tools also for doing the querying and they are wedges, hammers, drills, chisels and specialized tools. So, if we look into the types of querying, one is excavating, taking out stone by use of pickaxe, crowbars and you can take out from the buried under the earth you can take out. Another is wedging. So, in wedging inside in part of a, a part of a stone you can actually carve out a portion by means of you can demarcate a portion by means of putting wedges. all along. In large numbers not obviously such small numbers. So, it is maybe 10 feet 10 meters by 10 meters and keep on hammering on those. So, you are putting force here. So, this particular part gets loosened and obviously there will be stratas and this part gets loosened and then you can take it out by hammering you can take it out. Again you can apply heating. So, by putting fuel in some portion you can create a localized unequal expansion that will lead to segregation of the layers. So, small thin regular blocks can come out. So, these are particularly for the igneous rocks like the granites can come out like this. If you want large hard rocks then you may go for blasting. So, explosives are charged and fired which dislodges the block which you want to separate out. Other than that we have borings, you can make deep bores, holes and then apply firing or by tamping you can you can take out the particular stone which will be useful or productive for the building for the purpose. So, after getting it out after querying what to be done? Stone has to be left there for seasoning. 
Why seasoning? Because when this stone comes out, a sap comes out on or the layer comes out, oozes out from the stone and keeps the stone soft as well as workable. So, the stone is still soft in nature. It is a mineral solution that covers it and it keeps on coming out and during this time if it is dressed that is if it is cut into its desired shape or form you can actually do a less amount of labor intensive part and then it becomes easier to carry it to the site. Now, these are to be kept after working maybe for 6 to 12 months for complete seasoning. So, these whatever sap is coming out of it has to keep on coming out till this time and actually these sap leaves a crystalline film on the faces of the stone and makes it weather resistant. So, the inclined weather the stone surfaces are to face when it is standing for say 100 years and even 1000 years. We have the Colosseum standing for so many years. Nothing has happened. They neither have a paint coat nor do they have a plaster coat. It is exposed. So, this weathering action it can take up better if you allow the sap to accumulate on top of it as a thin crystalline film. So, that is the purpose of weathering, pur purpose of seasoning. Next we have dressing of stone. Obviously, during the seasoning process you can dress stone because it still remains softer than actually it is than actually it would be once in use. So, dressing refers to the cutting of the stone to its desirable shape and size and even form as you can see in the third line it is written dressing, curving, molding all should be done just after querying. So, stone is still softer than what it should be which helps in the process of giving it any shape. And obviously, once you are dressing you are giving a shape or form or you are making it regular. It will reduce the space it may actually would have taken while transporting. So, it will reduce the weight as well as minimize the space once it is being transported. And the residue part remains in the query. So, this residue does not go waste. We will also see yes that has use one we have already discussed that is the aggregate part. Now, instead of moving to how many types of stones are there let us now move into the what are the characteristics of good building stone. As you understood stones can be used as a building building block similar to that of brick. So, it must have enough of strength. Let us see what is the strength and appearance as you all know the first point is texture and color. You can differentiate stones just by looking at it. We have some pictures also to make you aware. You can understand with time with exposure that yes this is marble, this is granite, this is black stone, this is sandstone. So, that is particularly the texture and the color which is giving you that clue. And strength it should be such that it should be capable of withstanding weather as well as taking loads. So, the third line sentence says reports the compressive strength where you see the compressive strength is 60 to 200 Newton per millimeter square. So, just think parallelly in go into my previous lectures you see what is the compressive strength of that of a brick. So, 
stones are way ahead in taking strength particularly compressive strength and weight or the density gives you a clue how way it is. The porosity also you can understand if it is having different structures. You see the three images. The image here as you see is quite porous whereas this is quite dense. In this picture you can see the color is black and the texture is rough. So, just by seeing or by observation you can find out whether a rock is porous or not, whether a stone is porous or not and what kind of color it has, what kind of texture it has. Heavy stones obviously have higher compressive strength and they are used for supporting structures. Heavy stones are usually used for dams, construction of bridges, they can stay in water for large time whereas light stones you can use them for carving, arches, walls, domes, cuttings, jaffrey works, soft stone, light stone you can use it that way. Porosity depends on obviously if it is porous it will keep on absorbing water but it generally depends on the mineral constituents and stone degenerates or disintegrates if it is highly porous. Granite and slate are the least absorbent. We will come to the individual stones whereas sandstone, limestone, shale are most absorbent even up to 10 percent. Next is the hardness. Hardness means it is the capability to resist against any deformation. So, if you are applying load on it, it may bend, it may get tampered. So, hardness is the property when it is to be demonstrated when it is some flooring, some pavement, when it is experiencing some load. So, soft stones if you keep on walking over sto soft stones for long time it will not it will wither out just because of friction, frictional force. So, hardness is important when we are recommending stones for some purpose. Due to temperature also the min minerals in the stone gets disintegrated. Particularly for igneous rocks the quartz part of it gets disintegrated by 575 degree centigrade whereas in limestone it disintegrates at 800 degree centigrade. But yes limestone is softer than that of igneous stone, igneous rocks, but it degenerates later if it is subjected to fire. So, these are some character good characteristics of building stone other than which we have the weathering action. Why weathering? As I told you your building stays uncovered with any material and it has to withstand the natural calamities, wind, sand breeze, rain, frost, sun. Against these also you have to be very careful. Workability is, other the, is the other part which is because of the hard stones, hard rocks and the soft rocks. When you can make the jaffrey walls with marble, you cannot make that with that of a basalt or an igneous rock. So, particularly for weathering, sandstone, very close grain stand sandstone is good. Specific gravity of stone, just to no keep a note, it is between 2.3 to 2.5 and the thermal conductivity here if you see it is higher than that of brick. So, that means stone will conduct external 
temperature inside. But remember, stone thicknesses may be much larger, but may be much more than that of a brick. So, after knowing these basic characteristics, we need to look into what can deteriorate stone. Because again I repeat, stone does not have a covering. Stone can be seen bare from outside. Stone used as flooring, used as roofing, used as wall, surface, all are bare. So, it faces rain, it faces wind, it faces temperature changes and hence it deteriorates, it might deteriorate. So, how fast one deteriorates based on that you are going to recommend. Lesser the deterioration obviously, we will recommend those for as a building material. So, here if you if I read out the points, rain water is the physical and chemical has both physical and chemical action on stones. Physical means it erodes the top layer, transports the top layer. So, it may wash out very gradual, but it can keep on happening time of with time. Particular chemical actions may be due to oxidation and the hydration of the minerals within it. That is because of the rainwater. So, the rainwater brings in brings the minerals in contact with water and the atmospheric oxygen helps in oxidation and lot of iron compounds form peroxides, sulphides, carbonates and gets oxidized and hydrated. Similarly, the physical action alternate wetting by rain and by drying because of temperature change can develop internal stresses. And similarly, due to temperature change you can have the water accumulated inside its pores may have freeze and thaw, freeze and thaw. So, every time water is getting solidified, expanding in dimension, creating pressure on the boundaries which is stone and again it goes to water state, the force is relaxed. Again it may freeze at night, in the morning, daytime it can become water again. So, the volume reduces. So, this mechanism of freeze and thaw can bring in lot of internal pressure that may eventually lead to the rupture of the stone. Wind can also erode the stone surface and wind along with sand, if it is a desert condition or a sea condition. In case of sea, it may be saline soil also, saline sand also. They are hitting the wall regularly and eating away the wall gradually, very gradually. This process is called attrition. Other than these, we also have pollutants, industrial fumes, acid rains which may deteriorate the stone. Taj Mahal is a burning example and lot of prevention, lot of efforts are being taken to correct it. Decomposition also takes place due to vegetative growth, pollutions, dust and dirt accumulation. So, you have to keep in mind that we need to also know how to maintain the stone. Before going into that, let us see how rocks are geologically classified. Due to the lava coming out due to volcanic actions, the eruptions, we get the igneous rock. That is the first form of getting rocks. And then when it gets weathered, carried in small parts, they keep on sedimenting or getting accumulated that gives rise to the sedimentary rocks. And when again it is subjected to heat and pressure, they get converted to metamorphic rocks. 
So, if we go further into the geological classification that is the igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rock, we will see that igneous rock is nothing but cool molten lava and it is usually the granites and basalts and not to say it is the hard form, it has a high compressive strength as you can see 77 to 130 Newton per millimeter square and it is very difficult to work. Its density is high, it has very low porosity and obviously water absorb very low water absorption which is around 1 percent. Color depends on the types of minerals within it, particularly the feldspar gives it the color. Again, if you have more amount of feldspar in the composition, they may decay the rock. Sedimentary rocks, as you understood, they are accumulating of due to weathering they are being carried out, they are accumulating in stratas. So, they are stratified formed over a period of time and they are deposited layer after layer and they become consolidated by the pressure. They are the slates, the limestones, the sandstones and you see they have a little lesser compressive strength. They are the starters 65 Newton per millimeter square. When they are standing the weather better and they are free from lime and iron when they are free from lime and iron. And the third is the metamorphic rock which we had already discussed when due to some pressure and high temperature due to tectonic movements occur these limestone these sedimentary rocks limestone slate and sandstone they become converted to or metamorphosed to granites get metamorphosed to gneiss, sandstone forms quartiles and limestone forms marble. And here also you see they have a crushing strength of 70 Newton per millimeter square, they are also hard and take fine polish. If we go to the other classifications, you can see it is the physical classification where you can see the stratas of rock in this picture. This is called stratified where you can identify the layers. So, these are basically the sedimentary rocks. You can see the unstratified blocks which are the igneous rocks formed due to the volcanic eruption. So, it is the other way of naming them. These are called unstratified, these are called stratified and foliated if it has very defined layers in one direction. Chemical classification if you go it is agrilaceous, silaceous and calcareous. Agrilaceous are the alumina based, silaceous are the silica based, those are the granites and basalts and the calcareous are the calcium based which are the limestone and the marbles. So, here the details of the values of their compressive strength etcetera are mentioned, but if you go back you will see it is the igneous rocks, the stratified rocks and the metamorphosed rocks. So, they are they can be classified physically as well as chemically. So, we can conclude saying that stone is naturally available unlike that of clay materials. Stones can be converted for our use in buildings. Characteristics of stones are to be are very important to be known because when we recommend stones are to be recommended appropriately because they have to withstand the weather as they do not have any coating or covering other than the natural seasoning. And their points of decay are also to be kept in mind and stones can be classified into different ways. We will carry on with the next lecture which will be again stone where we will highlight on the use of it, how to maintain it and also how to create a masonry work out of it similar to that of bricks. Thank you.